Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey, guys. Doing a review here after dark. This is my review for VHS 85. For those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I am a guilty pleasure enthusiast of found footage films. The VHS anthology has been a consistent factor in the found footage community. It is crazy to think of how long the VHS anthology has been with us. The fact that the first one came out over a decade ago, and we have had several iterations over the last few years. Of course, some have not been good, some have been quite poor, but there have been some shining ones. I still say the first one was a really cool idea, the second one still has the best stories, and then there's been kind of like a, uh, like a mixture of good and bad VHS viral being one of the worst ones. The most recent one, 99, was okay-ish. 85 does do some things well, it does do some things bad, but the thing that it actually did the best was it did a continuity story. Now, the thing that's been always a reoccurring theme in the VHS stories is that while there are these different tapes that have different little short horror stories, there is always usually one consistent one, and that admittedly has never truly been done well. Maybe the second one, and maybe the first one did it okay-ish, but it just never made sense that people would just keep on putting in weirder and weirder VHS tapes. This one absolutely removes that aspect entirely, and it gives you, technically speaking, two consistent stories. The first being the first story you get, which is No Wake, which then turns into Ambrosia, a group of campers, going out to a lake, and then someone shoots at them and kills them, but then something kind of goes awry. Something very unnatural happens, and that story is then continued into Ambrosia, which is, I think, the fourth story. And that's really cool. I actually like that aspect. You want to know what is going to happen next, and that is something that the continuity or the main overall stories from the previous VHS's never did. You didn't care really what was going to happen. This one's different. You actually want to know what the story is and that is also playing into Total Copy. And Total Copy is this short little mini documentary that's being played in between each clip and that has to do with this weird entity being found at the top of a mountain and naming him Rory, and uh, there is a mad scientist who becomes obsessed with him, and obviously things go wrong. And I will admit, that story doesn't really end on an interesting note. It just kind of ends very predictably. Of the two stories, I very much liked No Wake slash Ambrosia. The weirdness in the first story carries over to the weirdness, the added weirdness of the second story. There's a few other stories, one being the God of Death, which is a news reporter being led out of his office after the 1985 earthquake, and they get, for some reason, pulled into the basement, which is also the grounds for ancient Mayan sacrifice. And as interesting as you think that might sound, it doesn't really happen until like the last two minutes and then it's over. T-K-N-O-G-D, this is the worst one. I understood kind of the joke of it, but honestly, it is the one you will skip. It's very boring. And then after Ambrosia, there is Dream Kill. And this I will say is probably the best individual story of the film. It is directed and written uh, by Scott Derrickson, also co-written by another guy, C. Robert Cargill. Scott Derrickson, you'll know from films like Sinister, or the first Doctor Strange movie. I'm not a Sinister enthusiast. I fell asleep watching Sinister. I've been meaning to rewatch it to see what on earth was the whole hoobadoo hoobadoo about it. The Dream Kill from what I've gathered, does take elements of Sinister, but it makes it quite cool. It makes it quite unique in the fact that these cops are following the trail of this murderer, but the main cop, played by Freddy Rodriguez of all people, is receiving tapes of the murders 
like first-hand account of the murders days if not weeks before the murders actually happen and that's a really cool idea and i also do like how the visual style of the story is portrayed the vhs series has always been known for gore and for taking kind of creative jump cut film burn sort of distortion for when either gory effects he uh, heavy effect elements what can be hidden by distortion or when gore happens and all of these series have tons of gore in them the very brutal elements of the story happen derrickson gives a pretty cool unique vision to it he's still playing into the what is happening but he's taking a much more artistic idea to it a little bit more of a dream like half image distortion a lost fuzziness like what you would see or try and remember from a dream when you're trying to recapture what you were had what you experienced in that dream just after you wake up it's muddled it's messy it's broken overall vhs 85 has two technically speaking three good stories dream kill is great it's probably one of the best stories of the vhs anthology no wake and ambrosia they are written and directed by the same guy so the fact that they are technically speaking two different stories that do connect i would almost call it one it is probably by that right the longest story aside from gareth evans uh, story that was in vhs 2 which still to this day is probably the best story that the VHS movie's ever done. But the other stories, including the other overarching one with Rory, uh, Total Copy, not worth it, not worth your time. So technically speaking, that's two out of three that are good to bad, which is kind of the ratio you get with VHS. Mark had a really good idea for this a while back and i'm kind of upset that they never went with it especially when they did vhs viral and mark if you guys remember been on the show many a time for the nightmare on elm street and the friday the 13th reviews he said why not have a bunch of different horror directors both big and small kind of come together and make something more so small really encourages the indie market and the best stories would make it into vhs and you almost want to say it's kind of a similar to the ABCs of death. That was a smattering of different directors giving very short stories. A lot of those stories sucked, but there were some good ones too. And I feel like VHS could have done something similar to that, but I think the reaction to viral was so bad that they just don't want to go down that road ever again, even if that is a pretty decent idea. Overall, my review for VHS 85, because there's two really good stories in here, since the split is almost down the middle with the negative in the favor, I am going to give VHS 85 a 3 out of 7. I like some of the stories. I don't like the majority of the stories, but there are some good ones here that elevate it. I would put it in a higher tier. It's better than viral. That's without a doubt. Viral is awful. I don't know if I'd put it up with the first one. Honestly, I would maybe put it in the same category as 99 because I don't even remember watching 99, but I know I did. But that's enough from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Let me know what you guys think. I know I'm one of the few who do like talking about these types of movies, but I do like the community and the idea that comes from them. Do you get a ton of fucking garbage in it? You absolutely do. But when you get the good ones, it makes you appreciate them all the more. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Till then, I'll see you on the next late night one.